Eric Darling here with uh, Eric Darling Data. And, uh, <clears throat> I'll be uh, out on location next week for Beer Gut Magazine doing a series of interviews with uh, some of the world's most famous beer guts. Actually, I'm just going just gonna to be on, va- on vacation. So because I'm on vacation, I'm, or will be on vacation, uh, I am going to, I am doing a bunch of low effort code review videos of uh, my new store procedure, SP underscore Quickie Store, designed to hopefully quickly get data out, useful data out of Query Store about your worst performing queries, I guess. That's the elevator pitch. Um, you can <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully that elevator doesn't smell too much like farts. Uh, anyway, uh, the first thing, according to um, my list, is uh, even though I have misspelled implementing, uh, I'm going to talk about implementing safe dynamic SQL in this store procedure. Uh, and despite the fact that uh, SSMS has this red rectangle uh, in the search bar, uh, I promise I do actually have things marked review 01 that we're going to look at. Now, uh, I went through and I marked a whole bunch of stuff with these things because um, this is a long store procedure. Turns out it takes a lot of code to uh, effectively... <laughs> figure things out in query store uh and and so i didn't want to spend a long time scrolling i've already got like some weird hand tingles from all the mouse wheel scrolling i've had to do (laughs) working on this thing so uh you know maybe maybe someday i'll get a purple heart from from microsoft anyway uh let's scroll down to where we start with some dynamic sql stuff and uh, you'll see some some things (laughs) you'll see some things that we're not reviewing yet that we will review in the future but uh, what I what I set up is a few different things. Now, uh, obviously, to hold dynamic SQL, and I don't know how long a string is going to be ahead of time, so uh, I've had to make some things max. I have tried to be kind when I know that a string is not going to be max, and I don't have to concatenate that string into a string that is a max, and hopefully not deal with any weird length conversion issues where SQL Server is like, oh, you're only in NVARCAR 4. We don't need the other 3,000 lines of text. Uh, that, so you know, try to do some nice things there. Anyway. Uh, what I do ahead of time, or at least most of the time when I'm thinking, is uh, when I'm, I know that some of my dynamic SQL is going to be working with objects, is I like to set up uh, variables to hold quoted versions of those object names. All right, so like I don't want to f- have to think about using quote name every single time I reference this thing. I just want to set up, set that up ahead of time, and then reuse it. All right, so I have a couple of those, and I have uh, my my Invarcar Max SQL, which is going to hold a lot of the SQL statements that I use, and I have my where clause, which I'm going to use a dam- to dynamically set up a where clause to hopefully find the right data, and yada, yada, yada. Uh, where I set some of those dynamic SQL bits, and even some other bits that I think are important to use, are uh, down here. Now, you'll see that one of, like even though database ID is under review 01. It's not technically used in dynamic SQL, but I think it's um, it's almost always a good idea to avoid uh, any confusion or uh, potential um, like incorrect data to get a database ID to go along with things. Uh, that way, you know, like let's say you're running this on a, a weird server where there's a lot of like backups and restores of databases and you might, I don't know, go to the wrong thing, look at the wrong place. Uh, something we'll cover in a future video about debugging is it will return parameter values for all these things. So you can at least make sure that you're getting to the right database. So, but even, so even though the database ID thing isn't exactly used in dynamic SQL, I think it is important to have uh, some, some things resolved for other reasons. Uh, but then down here, you can see uh, database name quoted uh, gets uh, turned to quote name there. And procedure name quoted gets a, it's a little bit more complicated because... <laughs> Uh, I, I use this in a, in a funny way with object name, which requires um, the, the string to be passed in there to be set up in a specific way to um, uh, be able to uh, find objects across databases. Now, remember, this store procedure is mostly going to be run from master. And if I want to resolve uh, an object name or an object ID in a different database, I need to tell SQL Server exactly where that's going to be. I need to tell SQL Server which database, schema, and object name to go after. All right, and so that can rather quickly get out of hand. So uh, I have to quote the database name. And something that's always bugged me about building dynamic SQL is when I want to put together uh, 
uh, uh, object names, whether it's you know database schema object or you know schema object, is I always have to put my own damn dots in. I wish that there was uh, something I could do that would just add the dots in for me. I'm sick, sick of damn dots. <laughs> If I, if I had a dollar for every time I typed uh, 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 tick dot tick, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I would probably not have to go write for Beer Gut Magazine, Moonlight for Beer Gut Magazine to make side money. But uh, So I have to get the database name, and then I have to go get the uh, uh, procedure schema. If I don't have that, then I substitute that with DBO, and then I have to get the procedure name in there, right? So that's the kind of stuff that I do there. Moving on down a little bit, uh, here are the parameters that I'll be, I pass into Dynamic SQL. Now, uh, two, there are two ways to give things to Dynamic SQL to look at. There's stuff like object names, which you can use quote name to like pretty safely quote out. And then there's the passing parameters in. I don't want to pass any parameters directly into my Dynamic SQL when I, if I can avoid it. Over in SP Human Events, or uh, sorry, SP underscore Human Events, I do have to do some of that stuff where I pass strings directly in because the way that extended events get set up, they don't allow for parameterization of things. So I have to take some extra steps to clean strings and make things make things make sure things are sanitary there. But here, I don't really have to worry about that too much. I'm just I'm passing in things that can easily just be parameterized, right? So I'm not going to concatenate any values directly into my string from user input. All of my user input is going to be passed and parameterized to those code blocks. All right, so let's move on down a little bit to the next section where Dynamic SQL starts getting used. And here you can see a wonderful example of how I use the uh, already quoted database name to get to the database that I care about to see if uh, query store options are uh, contain uh, valid uh, uh, settings or contain any settings at all. This was actually kind of a tricky check to write. Initially, I was looking just at sys.databases to see if query store was turned on, but it turns out you can have terribly uh, unreliable metadata <laughs> in sys.databases. I ran into situations where, uh, so I, I've been testing this thing out with, with, with clients and you know uh, all that other good stuff uh, you know, for a while now. And I ran into situations where sys.databases said query store was turned on. And, but the query store setting said, no, we're not turned on. And I ran into situations where sys.databases was like, query store isn't turned on here. But I looked at uh, the query store setting, and lo and behold, query store was enabled at the database level. So there's all sorts of things that can get weird there. So what I, I, I have to make sure of if I'm going to tell people that query store is really turned on is that uh, it's, it's got an actual state of zero right? Or, or uh, if, sorry, the thing that I have to look for if query store is not turned on is ha uh, having a query store state of, of zero. And I saw this once uh, in, in SQL Server 2016 uh, in RDS. I don't know if this is a normal thing, but I, I've realized that I had to check against this too. The other thing that I check for is to see if there are absolutely no rows in here. Because right, this only handles if we find something, right? I need to figure out if absolutely no rows exist in that table, then we're also going to return a zero here, right? And then if we go down a little bit further, uh, we'll see um, some of how the uh, SP execute SQL stuff works with parameterization. So we pass in our SQL, we pass in the parameters that SQL Server expects, which, which in this case is query store exists up here. Uh, in other cases, this could you know be replaced with you know whatever where clause values you want to stick in, and then uh, we tell SQL uh, we tell the dynamic SQL block that we expect this thing to get passed as an output parameter, right? And then if query store exists equals zero, then we will throw this error message. Fun stuff. Now, uh, there is a good, another thing that I want to actually look at. I, did, I think I neglected to uh, note. No, not in the selection, dummy. Uh, in the review stuff, but uh, you can use a parameterized set of parameters with dynamic SQL. So in this case, if you remember, uh, way up here, Way up here, uh, I have a parameter, uh, declared variable called parameters, and then I have uh, these parameters that I define in this block here. And then if we go down way further 
to here, you can see that I actually use a parameterized set of parameters to pass parameters into my dynamic SQL so that when I built up my where clause and done other stuff, then uh, like all the stuff in here where I tell the SQL server where, where I want to find, where I don't want to find, uh, it's a little bit easier to read right up somewhere uh, about, oh God, where is it? <laughs> there we go. In here where uh, my, my where clause is going to be, you know, stuff like uh, you know, looking for start dates and end dates and execution counts and things like that. Anyway, uh, that is how I implemented uh, hopefully 100% safe dynamic SQL in SP Quickie Store. Uh, I, I hope you enjoyed watching this. Maybe you found it somewhat informative. Uh, I'm going to get this rendering and start recording the next video, which will be about how I implemented error handling. So fun stuff. I will uh, uh, see you, I guess, in the next video then. That makes sense, right? More videos for everybody. Free! Goodbye.